A white man with a big mustache visits our school today. He isn't like the priests. He certainly isn't a nun. Some whisper he's a doctor. Dr. Peter Henderson Bryce was one of the greatest physicians of his time. He went out and documented the health of children in residential schools in 1904. This building is falling apart. There are way too many children and, and not enough space. 98 in a room that fits just 25. Our affairs are under control, doctor. That doctor is the chief medical officer of Indian Affairs, touring residential schools in Western Canada. There have been reports of hundreds, even thousands of deaths. The exact numbers are not kept. His name is Duncan Campbell Scott, an entrenched bureaucrat, longtime deputy superintendent of the Department of Indian Affairs, a fellow of the Royal Society, with honorary degrees from the University of Toronto and Queens, and a writer of lyric poems. <laughs> Idolizing a way of life, if only in poetry. And closer in the shawl about her breast, the latest promise of her nation's doom. Paler than she, her baby clings and lies, the primal warrior gleaming from his eyes. Who is this black coat and tie? Christian severity etched in the lines he draws from his mouth. Clearly a noble man who believes in work and mission. In the name of God, country, and the white man, Scott fashions policies that promote the erasure of indigenous cultures. The first reports from Dr. Bryce are embedded with humane concerns. They are wasted on Scott. He has the liberty to do as he pleases, and few are concerned. Five minutes in the school and I'm already in dire need of air. The windows are opened occasionally, but we don't want them to catch cold. Now do we? <coughs> Once again, I'm told not to worry. Do they exercise? The exercise they get is sufficient for good health. I want to go outside. Abysmal conditions? No ventilation or sanitation? An immediate remedy? <laughs> For Indians? Comes to talk treaty and annuity and destiny to make the inevitable less painful. Bearing gifts that must be had. Notice how he speaks aloud and forthright. This or nothing. How do you possibly care for pupils when they are sick? Through prayer and discipline. 
They need more than prayers. No medical officer. They need remedies. No medical officer shall. They have tuberculosis. No medical officer shall halt our Christian values. He found they were dying at the rate of 25% a year. And in one school that kept complete records, 67% of the kids were dead. These Indian schools are the biggest farce I have ever seen. And you could literally save these children's lives. And Canada said no. We have created a situation so dangerous to health that I was often surprised that the results were not even worse. Indian children in the residential schools die at a much higher rate than in their villages, which is geared towards the final solution of our Indian problem. Others, they don't like the way he's always busy writing stuff in the notebook he carries. Him, he calls it poetry and says it will make us who are doomed live forever. The voice of Canadian public was not loud enough and not strong enough and not sustained enough to get the government to change things. And in that way, I don't think it's that different today. Justice has to come, and then reconciliation will follow. Bryce knew that.